Good morning, Australia. Good afternoon, America. Welcome back. This is Radio Tony, and I'm your host, Tony Londis. Now, this is a new series of six shows with the wonderful Damien Papworth. But before I introduce you to Damien, just a reminder that if you're listening live online on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, Heyo is ready to answer any of your questions and reply to you with links from anything that we discussed today. Alternatively, you can jump on radiotony.com where you'll find all the information and the links to our guests today. A reminder that replays are available on Binge TV USA and on the Tony TV app available on all LG, Roku and Samsung smart TVs worldwide. Now, this new series of co-hosted shows is with entrepreneur and businessman Damien Papworth, and we're going to be talking about a new way of doing business. And as Damien says, we want to change the world. But before I introduce you to Damien, here's what you need to know. Solpreneurs all have a craft, a gift that when they share, they make the world a better place. Damien's craft is business. It became obvious as he transitioned from corporate to business in the 2000s, and he quickly built and sold two businesses within the first couple of years. Now on his third business, another business he created from an idea born out of a sense of purpose, Damien found himself enjoying a business growing to 10 times the size of the second. Damien was really enjoying this and the flow of business, contributing to the community, his life in balance, and it was amazing. So this sparked an idea. After 20 years in the school of hard knocks of business wisdom and amplified success of seeing what works and what doesn't, Damien decided he wanted to share all of that knowledge and wisdom with others. Well, if you like Damien, if you're like Damien and I and want to make the world a better place, the best that he can do is to support people like you, people with a gift, a passion and a purpose. So if you're sitting in your purpose, wanting to change the world through grassroots service, but need some support working through the business side of things, then Damien's here to support you via the soul of business. So each week, Damien and I will be looking for the next six weeks to talk about what the soul of business and the essence of that idea was and is. So uh, Damien's looking forward to sharing with you each week from real life business experiences. And I want to start today's show with one of Damien's favourite quotes. The plain fact is that the planet does not need more successful people. It does, but it desperately needs more peacemakers, healers, restorers, storytellers and lovers of every kind from David Orr. Good morning, Damien, and welcome to the show. We're really delighted to have you with us today. I've been looking forward to this show series for so long, I can't believe it's quite here. So how are you, Damien? I'm well, Tony. Good morning also. It's um, a little bit chilly here on the Gulf Coast, but... um... Oh, it's fresh, so I feel alive. It's great. It is. I woke up this morning to a lovely white covering of frost on the uh-huh. bottom fields of our paddocks, and I Beautiful. thought, oh, it's a bit cold this morning. Yeah. But let's get on with the show. Um, Damien, you're a successful entrepreneur and business owner, but you started life in the corporate arena. What oh, helped yeah. you make that yeah. original jump? from corporate to business? So I think, um, I mean, I think everything in life's a bit of a journey. And I had a journey in the corporate world after, you know, I had a pretty standard entry into career, I think, you know, high school, have to yeah. do university. So I did university and I had to get a job and I got a job and the job was very entry level. Um, 
But I made my way through and pretty quickly in the early days of career, I found myself in a position in a senior management role in um, one of the yeah. departments of a big IT firm, um, CSE, Computer Science Corporation. So mm-hmm. um, looking back, I think, you know, I think we all have gifts and, you know, areas of genius that we that are part of our natural um, makeups. And I think one of my areas of genius is to bring people on a journey, um, you know, to, to influence yes. them, paint a picture and have them follow, follow that journey. And, um, you know, just intuitively doing that back in the career days, in the corporate days, um, in that senior management role, I found that I had an amazing team around me and everything was getting yes. done. And everything was getting done yes. really well. And that left nothing for me to do. So I just, and in, you know, corporate world, senior management, you have to be there. So yes. I'd get up in the morning, I'd get to the office and I'd work for my 45 minutes to an hour and there's nothing left for me to do yeah. and everything was humming. And that was it's soul destroying. Except for you. Everyone else was working. Team. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So what happens is, you know, at the end of that one hour when I'm just, which is basically checking boxes too, so it's not inspiring work, it's not creating work. I mm. think I think there's a, a mindset or a, um, a, a sense of being with entrepreneurs that we need to be creating. When we're creating, we right. feel momentum and the world is great. So when we're yes. in a position where we're administering, th- there's no creation. Um, and then we've got big gaps of time of nothing, we're doing nothing, it destroys yeah. your soul. Absolutely. So, yeah, and, you know, one of the things I can really vividly remember was, you know, I was doing a bit of kite surfing back then, and this was when kite surfing as a sport was very young. Um, and I remember we were in yeah. the office of the Kilda Road and we were, I think we were about six or seven floors up where my, where my office was. And I just, yes. at 2 p.m. every afternoon when the wind came across the Port Phillip Bay, I could see all the kites going up from my office. And I was like, well, I've got nothing to do, but I have to sit here and not enjoy that because I'm supposed to be here. Um, yeah. And I just, yeah, what I found is, you know, that sort of period of time of not being creating and not um, and not being um, actively, you know, mind engaged, I'd get home at yes. the end of the day and, you know, there's no inspiration. It's just that sort of feeling of nothingness and lack of momentum and, and lack of inspiration bleeds into the rest of my life. So I had to make a change and I tried to, I tried to get into other parts of the business. Like I tried to do more account management, but, you know, account management in corporate means that you're making sales, which means, um, and I did that quite yeah. well. I was very intimate with my clients. I had good relationships with them, but then the sales teams weren't getting their commissions because I was making the sales. So it created political <laughs> backlash. Um, I was told to stop making sales kind of thing in the corporate world. So um yeah, so, you know, initiative was sort of squashed a little bit. And so basically what yeah. I started doing is working out, well, I've got this time, I need to be here. How can I use it productively? And I just started, you know, back in, you know, the early 2000, the dec- early decade of 2000, I started playing with the internet. Yes. Um, trying to see if I could craft something on the internet myself. And um, this is before Google was what it was today. It was, I think we had seven or eight uh, search engines back then. So it was a completely different world. Um, but yeah, so that's that's basically how we I started transitioning. We did have more search engines, you forget, don't you? Yeah, so I'm a sort of a dinosaur in this industry, I think, because I can remember that no. stuff. <laughs> and so, what led so you started um, in that creative area, and yeah. what? came from that that was your first foray into business Damien yeah so what happened from there was um I just was messing around and what I tried to do because I needed I, I knew I needed change so I was messing around and at the at the end of um, one of the months I think it was two months or three months in all of a sudden with my messing around there was an extra twenty dollars in the bank account and I was like oh something worked and I thought, what, what worked? So I went back and worked out what worked and I did it again. And then there was $40 in the bank account yeah. at the end of that month. Yeah. Um, so I doubled it and then I doubled it next month. 
And so just all of a sudden I had made $80 in a month, you know, annual terms. What's that? That's like a thousand dollars a year. So I quit, I quit my job at that $80 that I'm leaving. Uh, but it's really cool because when I, um, so I did resign and I did it, I didn't do it in a nasty way, but I did it in a very clear no. way. And I just remember, like I remember there's a story I've heard recently, which is quite cool. And it was, um, I don't know if it might be based on fact, I'm not sure what the origins of it are, but it talks about a warlord who, yeah. I think it's yeah. a Viking sort of thing where the, the warlord, you know, yes. he lands his ships on the beach. Um, we're going to win this war. And just to prove it to you, he, he tortures all the ships. So the guy, you know, his, his warriors can't go home. They have to win the war. Yes. Um, yes. And that's kind of what I did with my with my career. I said, this is it. You know, I've, I've just earned $80. And I'm not going to go back to this career. So I left in a way. I've got a new phone. I text all my things saying, hey, guys, I've retired. You can't get me on this phone number anymore. You have to do this new phone number. Um, and I went from there. And I just, that's how I, I stepped into business. What a scary way, but what an inspirational way to step into business. Um, so that first business continued to do well. And then you, what was the next sequence? There was a time and a place we've discussed where you had sold the first business, you're into the second business. And there was that terrible period of time where you faced bankruptcy and yeah. survived. Can you tell the audience about that, Damien? Yeah, sure. So I think um, so. The actual timelines of the business are a bit murky because the the business the, the yeah. first business ended up being the second one that I sold. But um, you know, as we as we go into business, I had no idea how to do business. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about the rules of business or um, how to do marketing or anything like that. So I just yes. you know it's a series of good luck or a series of thinking on my feet or a series of just you know resilience and I'm just going to make this work got me got me through that some of those those times and um and obviously the internet changed a lot too like back when I was yeah. when I started I was when I started I was just advertising um on online and, and in commission selling other people's products um, and that worked quite well and you know to a certain um time when the rules around search engines changed a lot and that became a lot more hard a lot more challenging but a lot of my friends in small business worked out what I was doing worked out that I was doing this stuff and they asked me to help them because they realized that internet was going to become more important for their business so I accidentally yes. I, yeah I accidentally fell into a digital agency and you know I had my, my first client um, Melissa Sangster I will be a cool accessories back then just an amazing woman. She she actually was my very first client and the very last client I let go. She was the last person I said I have to oh. move on. Yeah. So, but she was an amazing support. She referred me to a lot of people, you know, taught me a lot about how business networks work just by, you know, being yeah. there. Um, and obviously there was support coming the other way with all the online stuff. She was the first person that I, I shared new techniques with and understood new things with um, search engines and that kind of stuff. So... That was an amazing relationship and I feel very blessed that, that Melissa was there along the way um, with me. But um, so I had a surfboard hire business. I moved up to the Gold Coast. That was back in Melbourne, moved yeah. up to the Gold Coast and just used my skills. I recognised that you know, a gap in the market here were that, that people who came here to surf could only rent their surfboards when the shops opened at 9am um, and then... They could spend a lot of money for two hours and they've got to drop it off. Um, leave it with right. the owners. And but the best surf's first thing in the morning. By the time you get to nine o'clock on the Gold Coast, the wind kicked in and the surf's terrible. So I just I had three surfboards from Melbourne when I moved up here and I just put together a quick website, rent it for your whole holidays. Here's a, a weekly rate, a two-weekly rate, a monthly rate. Um, and all of a sudden, I had 36 surfboards in the bathroom and that started to create issues at home. So, so I had to do something with that. Um, but it was such a good feeling. Um, it's a really, really good feeling business because everyone was happy. I was the yes. guy who was giving them their surfboard for their holidays and, you know, it was really cool. Yes. It was never big, but it was a lot of fun. But I, yes. I ended up selling it at the end as, you know, the business interest kicked in and got busy and and. You know, we needed yeah. to use, we needed to use things that were in that bathroom too. So I had to make some decisions. Um, 
But yes, I sold that one. And then um, Ocean Feather, which was my digital agency, uh, we'd sold that. We were going down the path of selling that a bit later. And and I bring it back to your original question around around the bankruptcy. The um, so this was yeah. the end of GFC too. So this was we went through the GFC, and that was a really tough time in the industry. Yes. It was a tough time for everyone. Um, other context around there too. Google, which was Google, was driving a lot of our industry back then. That I mean, they're very monopolistic, obviously with um, with how they they own the search engines pretty much. I mean, they still got eighty percent of traffic, but ninety percent of traffic, I think. So massive and. But they were making very big changes to the way the search engine works, but they were, um, they were also being very punitive. Like if people were doing advertising or, or search marketing in ways that they didn't like, they were punishing people. So they were deregistering oh. websites from the search engine and things like that. So middle of GFC, you know, it was, it was quite traumatic for a lot of small businesses that all of a sudden, mm. I mean, Google created this thing that worked in a certain way. And it worked that way. Yeah. So um, they created the monster, but they said we don't like people using it this way, but they created it. And then, they, then they'd say, well, because you used it in the way that we created it, we're going to punish you because we don't like that. So it was, it was really sort of a difficult time Ooh. for the whole industry, I think. Um, and a lot yeah. of small businesses too who, who fell into this sort of way of being um, of being punished by this big, big corporation. Um, yeah, yeah. And but that's fine. I mean, that those things happen, and usually as a result of those sort of changes, the world's a better place. And I think in, in this case too, you know, search became better and became more friendly. And you know, in, in some respects, digital marketing became less spammy, and the industry cleaned up a little bit. So it was all fine in the end, um, even though it was tough. Right. So yeah. So out of the GFC, um, I was approached. You know, we, we weren't doing great in business. It was a struggle. Um, the whole every like, you know industry generally so mean, was at that time that time was the the gfc um yeah. has covid been a little bit similar as the gfc or was the gfc just really bad on a lot of different levels in, in think, business i'm talking yes yeah, so i think there's similarities but there's differences i think but yes. with with um the gfc it was a very definite economic thing and there wasn't a, yes. a quick bounce back. Um, and it was difficult for everyone. And the problem with thing like the GSC is that when something like that happens, you know, money shrinks. So people are losing their yes. houses, they've got no money. Um, people lose money yes. for their investments, so they've got no money. People lose their jobs and their, um, you know, their businesses shrink. So there's, there's a lot less money, which means, yes. you know, and that cycles because then people have got less money to spend. So then other shops... Yes. You know, other merchants and other business people, their businesses are shrinking, so they got less money. Um, but on the flip side of that, everyone knows what's going on. Everyone recognises the process yeah. and everyone tightens their budgets and at some level gets on with it. Um, now, COVID's a little bit different for me in that on the two aspects of it is that we've had a shock and it's been a big shock. Yes. Um, and mm. part of it, money shrinking because people lost their jobs and they shut down. But I mean, in Australia, obviously, I'm thinking about Australia through that lens. I know it's different in every other country, yes. but the government here has put a lot of money into the economy, um, a lot. It has. So mm. that's certainly propped it up. If people have people are still spending a lot here because there's a lot around. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. we don't get that cyclical shrinking, shrinking, shrinking thing. But flip side of it too, you know, what I said about GFC, everyone knows what's going on. No one knows what's going on. Yeah, I mean, like there's yeah. so much uncertainty that it's, um, and it's, there's other issues, you know, so socioeconomic issues like there's a housing crisis, <clears throat> housing availability crisis, both in rentals and purchases yes. here in Australia, and part of that's because Definitely. of the government stimulus. But it, no one knows what's going on, so if there's a lot of uncertainty yeah. which cracks its own issues. So, you Agreed. know, they're similar but very different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so back to back to that GFC time for you and yeah. and the business and and how difficult it was for you at that time. Um, what was that like and and what was born out of that time for you, Jamie? Yeah, so I mean, going back to that that brush with bankruptcy, I guess. Um, so what happened with me yeah. is that we were we were coming out of the GFC. Things were still tight. Um, I learned a lot about managing stress and mindset and stuff like that it was a, like you know i had some terrible stories on how i was mismanaging stress back then um, um 
But what happened was I was approached um, by a couple of like, like two men who, two gentlemen who were um, trying to consolidate the industry in Australia. Um, right. And we had a chat and I liked their vision. And I, along with, there's about 13 other business owners who sold into this vision, sold our businesses. Um, and as it turned out, in retrospect, these two guys weren't good guys. They're actually not good guys at all. Um, and within four months, all those 13 businesses were actually... So part of the um, part of the business model was that I went along um, for Southeast Queensland, Northern New South Wales as a uh, yeah. business development manager to keep the businesses going. Um, my staff all, all went along uh, fit into the new business, the big yeah. business, the consolidated business. And we had, you know, earnouts. We had to hit certain targets to make sure that we got the value for the sale. But these guys weren't right. good guys. They were, um, you know, if I look back, you know, there's misappropriation of funds. There's a whole bunch of stuff that went on. Basically, within four oh, months of me, I was the last business that bought into that, that sold that, that sold to that vision. And within four months of me selling, oh. everything was gone. So. Oh, God. Everything. So I, I can just remember... Um, there's just one memory towards the end of that that will never leave yeah. me. And I just I yeah. just remember just um having dinner and I've got my three yeah. kids. I think my youngest then was was just before one. And I was just looking into yeah. their eyes at dinner and I'm like, six weeks I can't feed you anymore. I've got there's this one moment I need to change something today. I've got six weeks and I can't feed you. And I just felt like a fraud. Yeah. It, was, it was it was literally what a I got one job horrible feeling I got one job to put food on your plate and I can't do it I got six weeks and I can't do it yeah yeah and when I when I hit that but moment I, mean, I still feel the yeah. emotional triggers to that moment but yeah. when I hit Absolutely. that moment, when I hit that point everything lifted like just all the stress all the pressure lifted yes. and I just and I just went back to making it work I made it work yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like yeah. another one of those. Um, there is a all good the shit that behind me. I know. I, 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 I've experienced that too. That when you get to that point, that is so low that there's nowhere else to go. It's just like it's it's that surrender moment um, that often happens in business where you surrender and go right. This has to work. I'm going to make it work. What am I going to do to make it work? And in your story, Damien, something very good was born and uh, created at that time. Can you tell the audience what happened next? It's um, No, I think when I look at that time, I think um, the biggest thing that I was being tested with was resilience. You know, how much did I want this? How much do I want my independence? Yes. How, much, how much do I want? Yeah. Um, because yeah. just to throw another spanner in the work at that time, my best mate died. So in those, oh, in, those in those weeks around there, my best best mate died from from bowel cancer too. So that was all mixed up there too. Oh. So, but and that was that was difficult. So, but what what yeah. basically happened is, I mean, some of the um, some of the dynamics around there is, you know, I've got had a mortgage it was two thousand a month, and yeah. I was trying because to see interest rates were not friendly back then. Let's remind people how unfriendly uh, a lot, a lot rates today. were back then. Yeah. Yeah. A lot easier today. But, um, but yeah, so, but I can remember that it had been eight weeks since I'd been paid because one of the things when this business fell apart is the rhetoric we're getting is, I'll keep working, we'll sort it out, we'll sort it out. But people haven't been paid for two months. So there's, I've, I've missed two weeks, two months oh. of salary. Um, I looked at my credit card and... I had a 15,000 limit, I think, on it. And yeah. I had spent 13,800 of it. <laughs> I had this 2,000 mortgage coming up. There was nothing in the bank account. Um, yep, yep, yep. I had, I had shareholders that needed the business to work who, who were part of my business who needed to get value from the sale and we didn't get any value from the sale. And yes. I had clients who were basically getting ripped off because... The clients that sold into the new business oh. weren't getting serviced anymore. I had employees who hadn't been um, who hadn't been paid for two months, and 
then I looked into my kids' eyes and recognised that I had no food for them in six weeks. So, you know, that's a sort of the, um, with, with Dan passing too, that was in the background. And so, so what I did, yeah. this is what I did. I, I, I took a step back and I, uh-huh. um, what have I got? I took a step back and tried to work yeah. out what I had. And what I had was my reputation. Um, and what I had yes. was amazing relationships with the clients that I built, that built into the business. Yeah. So I had a lot of um, non-competes in my contracts too, and I just disregarded those. I thought, well, you know what, <laughs> there's nothing for them to take anyway now. So well, you got, yeah. yeah. And, there was, yeah. and there were so many breaches in contracts um, from the other side that it was it was irrelevant anyway. So basically what I did is I, I, just, I just got on the phone and I called every single one of my clients from that time, and there were 70, um, very yeah. humbly and, uh, you know, openly just shared them what happened. And I had a, a roadmap for them to get out of the mess. So I just wanted to make sure they were looked after. Got them out of the mess. Yeah. I, I held on to 10 out of those 70 clients who I continue to serve. Um, and that's yeah. how I, I mean, cash flow wise, you know, I, I just started making it work from, from that. Um, what I realised at the same time was there was, 12 other business owners who were caught up in the mess also who had nowhere to go. And there were marriages that split up over it. Um, there was a bankruptcy oh. or two. Um, but what I did is I put a, like I engaged my old team um, to, yes. to my old business. I said, Let, let's put something together to help everyone out of this mess. And we put a, a quick wholesale model together. Um, and, yes. you know, a lot of gratitude from the people we shared that with. And all of a sudden, the guys yeah. that we shared that with said, hey, Damien, what you've got here is actually pretty good. This is creating, you know, this is yeah. a model that's working um, better than what we had. Can you actually try to make it a bit more formal for us? These are some, um, and also I was getting this feedback that this thing that we had is actually special. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah. Yeah. so, yeah, I talked to um, the manager of the business that I engaged, in, who's in Pakistan, about, well, oh, this is the feedback we're getting. Um, why don't we make it more formal? And, yeah. um, you know, this is the journey that I see us going on. This is the vision that I have. Um, and it all comes back to the one yeah. thing, the one thing of how can we be of service? How can we be of service to this industry? Um, and we've mm-hmm. basically gone down this path of let's serve the industry, let's focus there. And every time we get feedback, how do we make the, how do we make the model better? Better. Mm. And that's the story of Globatel. Yes. Now, Globatel is Damien's number one business. And of course, this series of shows is about the soul of business. Um, and the reason why we want to talk about the soul of business is, is because we want to showcase all the things that Damien's learned that have gone into the creation of solar business. But Globatel is the one that's given you the freedom to start working on something you're really passionate about. Um, I'd really like to start talking about the uh, story around the concept of the solar business, where it come from and flute playing. Ah, flute playing. Um, all right, so so I mean, one thing about Globatel too that I realised when it came together is basically every, like nothing's ever wasted in life. Like every single bit of business yeah. wisdom that I'd learned up to that stage went into Globatel. I was pulling stuff from my old career. I was pulling stuff from when I had a, like a part-time yeah. casual job at McDonald's as a teenager. It all went into Globatel, which yeah. is really cool. Um, and I just realised that's that, the thing about. That's the thing about a business journey. It it uh, builds on all the things that you learn, the good and the bad, and it keeps building on it. And it's a wonderful journey if you're in business, isn't it? Absolutely. It's uh, As long as you can always step back and say, what did I learn? Um, yeah. But, yeah, so COVID obviously hit last year and um, I've been learning flute before COVID for about a year. Um, and look, Which so- I think is pretty cool, by the way. I know. When when I told Tony, she, she had happy feet, like and all her feet started tapping like that cartoon. It was very funny. Um, but anyway, so um, 
pulling that together. So basically the mind, body, spirit industry, I've always found fascinating. I've got a lot of friends in the industry. Yeah. Um, and But what I've found over the years is that I've always ended up mentoring people who are trying to make something of what they're doing and they can't figure out the business mm-hmm. bits. Um, and, you know, a couple of my friends, yeah. Soraya and Maddie down in, um, they're down in or just out of Byron Bay, mm-hmm. who they do the crystal singing bowls. And, you know, they're a um, couple that I've, yeah. I've helped helped in that sort of mentoring regard just informally you know there's no real I mean there's an exchange of you know service so they'll, they'll help yes. me with um relaxation meditation that kind of stuff and yeah. um and so I was always at me you're going to make this formal this is you know you're helping us so much kind of stuff and I remember three years ago I registered um the main uh business names marketing spirit guide and I did nothing with it right. that was going to be a business um, but anyway, so I'm learning flute. I have the most amazing instructor. She's so inspiring. Her name's Ariana. She's uh, she's out in Bosnia. Yeah. So we both we do it all yes. by you know basically Zoom meetings. And yeah. you should, everyone should go check her out. It's Ariana Flute on Instagram and on YouTube. She's got a quite a large yeah. following, um, but she's brilliant. And yeah. you know, around August last year, when, when COVID hit, you know, I, I did a lot of work to. Um, keep our clients going, keep our industry going. Um, obviously, a big shock at yeah. the start, but after the big shock at the yes. start, things started falling into place. And a lot of the strategic stuff, a lot of the leadership stuff that I was doing at Globetel got really hard. So once again, I started finding myself with a, a lot of time on my hands. It was all put things in place, inspire everyone to follow me on this journey, and then sit back, or otherwise, I'm tripping up people. So I had a little bit of time on my hands. Right. Um, and as I had a little bit of time on my hands, um, Ariana and I started talking about um, what would happen if, if we looked at doing a business together. Um, actually, I remember saying to yeah. her, you know, I've got a bit of time on my hands and I've just been thinking what to do next. <laughs> and if there's one person in the world I love to go into business with, it would be you. Um, so that was a conversation yeah. we had in August. And, you know, we started talking a little bit about that. And what I saw was, um, and I try not to speak out of turn putting words into our yes. mouth, but what I sort of felt was uh, different time zones, but there was this growing feeling of inspiration and momentum as we started chatting, you know, and most of it's WhatsApp messages, that kind of stuff, but there'll be a message and yeah. you'd send a message and that'll pick me up. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. And I'll send a message back and she'd seem to, to lift. And, you know, we talk about this and there's just yes. this growing cycle of momentum of, um, that you just can't help but get carried away by. Yes. And, you know, as as this happened, I got all these domain name renewals and business name renewals for marketing spirit guide at the same time. And I was like, oh, ah. I'm, getting, I'm getting a nudge here. Everything, the universe is talking to me. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, so what I am, um, you know, as the months progressed after that, basically, I, um, you know, I looked back on the feelings that were and the, you know, the momentum and the inspiration that was coming out of those, those early conversations with Ariana and, you know, what does it actually represent? Linking it mm-hmm. together with Mark, um, Marketing Spirit Guide and the, you know, how Soraya and Maddie were pushing me to do, put more formally the course together. And, and what I think yeah. it... Um, what it represented for me was it's there are people in the world who um, which seem to come together in industries like music, like the arts, like, um, you know. Yeah. The well, healing industries. The healing industries, absolutely. Um, and these people are so absorbed in their craft that being yeah. part of that is just amazing. Like just just being part yes, of that and so yeah yeah so I thought well that's kind of why I probably keep getting drawn to this industry and maybe it's time mm. that I started drawing them to me <laughs> so I could have that feeling every yeah. day um and be part yeah, of that yeah. and you know and I also recognize yeah. that my gift isn't to go out and to do Reiki or to do um you know energy healing that's not my gift that's not who I am but Maybe I can sit in the background and help these guys a lot, help them share their mm. gifts. So that's where the solar business came from. And I love, I love the name, the solar business. Is it, it, it um, having having 
spent time with Damien now, the soul of business is all uh, the business stuff plus the uh, the soul of what makes the healers, artists, storytellers of the world, very special people. Um, Damien and I are completely aligned in that idea that it's those people and empowering those people to do what they do at, a, at the highest level that they can operate that will change the world. Um, I absolutely believe that there is a space uh, coming where we will do business in um, a better way. And as Damien says, for some of those healers, business feels transactional and heartless. And I know, Damien, you wanted to make it not so heartless and transactional so that they too enjoyed that process of business while still delivering their amazing gifts to the world. And we're talking about people that do wonderful things. Um, Damien, if you go back to that um, lunch meeting that we had with um, some of the team from the Soul of Business community, and um, one of the girls in that group does amazing things around crystals and healing and energy and craft uh, and jewellery, just amazing stuff yeah. and she deserves to be as successful as what we might see traditional big businesses and that's what sits behind the soul of business isn't it yeah 100 percent. so going i mean going back to that david all quote you know the world doesn't need more successful yeah. people you know this is a thing for me it's because you know i want to change the world too you know, and I've, I've, um, yes. I've, I've got this thing in my, this fire in my belly at the moment that, you know, I probably can get away with not doing anything else in my life. I probably, I've, the, the books have been balanced for me. You know, I don't feel I have anything yes. left to prove, but I've got this yeah. burning fire in my belly that I need to, I need to be more now. I need to make change. I need to impact more people. I'm, I'm, it's, it's now time to make the world a better yeah. place for me. Um Absolutely. Yeah, and I go back for that and I can't shake it. It's like it's just there and it's like it's burning. And um, you know, I'm sleeping six hours a night at the moment, but I've got more energy than I've ever had in, in my life. Um, but yeah, going back to that quote, yeah. you know, what's what's success in today's world? And what success does in today's world is it um it attracts resources and it attracts influence. Resources yes. influence. So it attracts yes. money, it attracts properties, it attracts all this stuff that then you can use in the world um, and influence because yeah. people follow success and people follow successful brands and that kind of stuff. So, you know, going they back do. to that quote, I'm, I'm like, I don't think the quote's quite right because what the world needs is, you know, the hear the healers, the storytellers, the musicians, they do. The, the lovers of all kind. The world needs those yes. people to be successful in terms of what success is today. So those people are the ones that are drawing resources to them. Those people are the ones that are drawing influence to them. Because when we get to that, that's yeah. how the world changes. Mm. And I think that's what yeah. my role is now is to help make that happen, help facilitate that. Yeah, I, I, this is what is so exciting about the opportunity to work with Damien and, and talk about the soul of businesses. I absolutely believe that the world needs to be a better place for Damien's children, for my grandchildren, and that means doing business and creating success in a different way. Um, and just for the listeners too, I, when we get on to talk about the elements of what Soul of Business is, uh, behind that sits some amazing training and so in preparation for doing these series of shows together Damien has graciously allowed me to follow on that course of training and I have to say I've done lots of business education I've done lots of marketing education I've done lots of social media uh, education but the stuff that you learn about in Damien's Soul of Business course will take you and your understanding to the next level. And I think that that's the way that we should be going, which is why I'm so passionate about having Damien on this show, um, doing this series of shows and talking about the soul of business. So, Damien, can you quickly just talk about 
the elements of the soul of business and a little bit about your greater vision. Um, and then we'll get on to talking about what we're going to talk about in the coming weeks. Yeah, cool. So um, the elements of the soul of business. So I guess uh, without going too much detail about the course, the elements of the, um, the soul yeah. of business, uh, there's, there's two parts of it. So one is business yeah. training. Um, yeah. And the other is community. And so we've got yeah. business training, which is trying to explain. The, the business training tries to do two things. One is sound uh, business fundamentals. And we've, I've started with and seeker level really, training. Yeah. yeah, so I've started with what I call a seeker level of training, which is just putting foundations in place so your business doesn't break. Um, but also a super, yeah. super important part of it is putting the foundations of business in place in a way that will have you so connected with your business that it never feels transactional. It never feels unaligned. It just feels like yes. you know, a beautiful extension to your craft. You know, what business actually is, yeah. is a bridge for you to reach the people that you need to reach so you can serve them. And that's all it becomes. It's yeah. just that bridge yeah. so that yeah. people can get to you. Um, and then the community side of it, it's, it's really important too. Because I think um, business can be really lonely. It can be a long, lonely yes. um, path. And yes, that, that's one of the things that I learned. I remember having a lunch with uh, two mates of mine, yeah. Daniel Glenn and Craig Billet, at the end of the GFC. Yeah. And we just shared these most horrific, horrifying stories that we experienced parallel to each other oh. during the GFC while we were all mates yes. and we didn't, share it. we didn't share what we're going through with any of us. We only shared once we got you to didn't. it. It's not yet such lessons we could share and we could have worked it out so much easier if we had have shared so that's what the community is about it's about walking the, the journey together yeah Damien do you think that um do you think that that's part and parcel of uh traditional businesses you just don't tell people how bad it is and how tough it is for fear of of, of failure do you think that's something that runs through a lot of traditional businesses and that um, for those people that work in the the healing and restorative trades um you know masseuses um energy healers they are more inclined to talk and therefore need that support oh i don't i don't necessarily think it's traditional versus alternative business or crafts i no, think no. It's, more, yeah, it's more of a yep. leadership thing i think leaders don't share because they lead um so yeah you know if we had we're leading clients so we're leading clients through their yeah. journey of healing or their journey of education or their journey of, of whatever and if we show that we haven't got our stuff together will, will that impact the way our clients see us you know we lead staff you know we have to lead lead staff and yes. if we show them that things aren't great will they go look for another job you know as, as a leader it's um yeah it's, it's quite hard to to lead in a way that's also vulnerable and you know, that's, um, that's something that I've had to work on and has had to be vulnerable in leadership. Well, I was going to say, but you've done it, Damien. You're a, a, a vulnerable leader, so it can be done, and it's such a better way to lead and live life, isn't it? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the first things I said is part of my genius is taking people on a journey, and it's hard to take people on a yeah. journey if you're not vulnerable. So I think that's I've gradually... Um, you know, brought that into my leadership style, but it's it's not a natural thing for a leader. Absolutely, to be vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. So let's yeah. talk quickly about um, the way that Soul of Business is set up. Yeah, so um, it's very new. Obviously, it's uh, so it started. It is. Uh, yeah, mid and exciting. Life. Very exciting. So, but what I want to see is. You know, there's what I, what I see a lot of people in this industry, in the wellness industry particularly, is, you know, we're doing massage and the business is about doing the massage work, you know, hands on bodies, relieving pain, that kind of thing. Um, what I want to see is everyone who's having impact in the world through their craft to leave something behind when they're finished. So the world, these, yes. these industries, are so, these businesses are so important, these people are so important. But oh, something has to survive them. Like at some, at some point, we're all going to retire. At some point, we're all going to die. Um, I'd yeah. like to see as many of the businesses that are in authentic service to their tribes, as many of these businesses to continue yeah. to serve once the, the founder or the, 
um, you know, the, the inspirer has moved on. Yes. And mm-hmm. so I call that legacy. Um, so the, the long-term plan for the solar business is we start with being seekers. You know, we're seeking this business journey and we learn the fundamentals of business. Yes. Um, and I'd like to align that with, um, you know, with the colour red and our, our root chakra. And, and then yes. I'd like to yes. take people, yes. yeah, and I'd, like, and I'd like to take people through a journey of, you know, seven levels of business attainment. So we go through mm-hmm. seeker, then the next one's initiate, then the next one's pathfinder, then we've, we've got adept, um, master, enlightened master. So I've got them all. Um, I don't know if that's seven. I've had them. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say, audience, this is a brand new business for Damien. So as as we've been talking uh, in in the short time that we've been setting up these shows, every time I talk to Damien, there's a new uh, level in uh, the soul of business that will take people from right basic level right up to real uh, life-changing, impactful success. Yeah. And that's what sits behind what you do, Jamie, and is that these wonderful healers um, and um, storytellers and artists, they deserve that same success and it can be achieved and this is how you do it. Come on a journey with with me through the soul of business and we will take you there. And because it's so new, we're um, starting with the seeker level, so the fundamentals and get those fundamentals in place through the education that the soul of business delivers and have yeah. a community that is starting to be built around you for that support because let's face it, a lot of these businesses are just soulpreneurs and I mean soul, S-O-L-E and S-O-U-L, preneurs. And it's really important that they yeah. achieve success, not only for themselves, but for the impact that they can bring the world. It's yeah. really important. We want a better world for our children and grandchildren. And yeah. by delivering success to those people, we do that, don't we, Damien? Yeah, 100%. And I think one of the important things too with this is what well, there's, I think there's 21 or 23 clients doing the seeker in our community already doing the seeker training. And yes. they're all different sizes of business. Some of them are full time. There's a couple yes. who is, you know, multi six figure. Um, yes. But the fundamentals are important because what happens when we don't get the fundamental, the fundamentals right? And this is what happens with the wellness industry. This is how, and this is what happens with the, mm-hmm. the arts. What happens, we start yes. doing business and all of a sudden we find ourselves doing invoicing and chasing debts, you know, chasing outstanding payments and doing administration yes. and we have to do marketing and we're forced to do this social media stuff. And, you know, the amount of time yes. we spend in craft, we started craft like way out here, you can't even see my hands, but then all of a sudden we, we find that we're doing all this horrible business stuff that doesn't align with us at all that we don't enjoy. And this yes. is all we're doing with our craft and we're exhausted and we only get to the crafty bit at the end of the day. So we lose hope. And Which lose, is your passion. We lose the passion and we lose the inspiration. And so what do we do? We just quit yeah. and we do our passion then as a hobby because that's where we used to get joy out yeah. of it. We don't give, you know, what a tragedy. We don't give the world what our gifts are. So the fundamentals are yeah. about, yeah. Um, the fundamentals for the seeker aren't all about um, let's make money. A lot of it's about how do we stay in flow? How do we stay in our, in our zone where, you know, we start at the end of the day. We start at the start of the day. We've been doing this thing all day. I forgot to eat because I'm just so absorbed in yeah. what I'm doing. It feels like half an hour, but it's been yeah. eight hours. And my yeah. energy level is higher than what it was at the start because I'm just so absorbed by this beautiful thing that I'm gifting to the world. So how do we stay there for yes. as long as we can? And that's what that's what getting the fundamentals in place are about. Yeah, yeah. Um, And as I said, guys, um, I'm doing this course as well as we're doing these shows and I'm just, I'm blown away by what I'm learning and the processes that Damien's put in place. The tools that the training uh, gives are really good. It's really good stuff. And it's always explained in a way that's so easy to understand. And I'm wishing that I had something 
uh, like that when I started business so that I could spend most of my time in that slow state or that state where your genius is or that state where you feel alive and empowered and aligned versus oh my god I've got to do the invoicing or oh my god I've yeah. learned on that speaker training it actually takes those bits that you don't quite like but puts them in a way that you go, oh, okay, That the reason I have to do that is so that I can do this all of the time. Yeah. That's the beauty of uh, the Soul of Business Seeker training. Um, I'm really excited to see the next levels because I'm always uh, thinking ahead and seeing the bigger plan. And I know Damien's bigger vision for the Soul of Business and it's exciting um i i want to share you i want to share damien with the world i want to share the soul of business with the world because this will change the way uh particularly the first segment of training this will change the way that small business owners and solopreneurs think about their business and it will in rejuvenate their the way that they think and the way that they do business and the way that they it can feel less transactional and less heartless and more aligned with their passion and purpose it's great stuff audience yeah. damien well, um sorry you go <laughs> so i think um i mean one of the the most common feedback i've had so far i had it yesterday i had caught up with um i had a quick yes. uh, type base with one of the the, the guys yesterday and she said what everyone's been saying. So I don't know what it is, but since starting this, things have just started falling yeah. into place. It's amazing. And, you know, it's not... I have I to agree. Yeah, I don't think it's me. I think what I've done is, one, I'm giving a lot... A lot there's a lot of confidence challenges in the, indus, in the wellness industry too. There's a lot of imposter syndrome, yeah. as we call it. But, you know, yeah. I'm giving people permission to be themselves. But I'm also... I think the most important thing is having that craft business alignment when they come together because... When they come together, we Absolutely. feel good about everything. And when we feel good, that's how law of attraction works. We're, we're sitting in this energy. Yes. And, and there's no yes. ne negativity. It's all positive. It's all inspirational. And it's all, I'm giving the world what, what's sitting in here. And so yeah. law of attraction, it just it just starts coming in. So the guys in the guys that are already that I'm working with, it's just amazing. Like everyone's having this, this drawing, this, this amazing. I was just gonna say, I and just for clarity, uh, audience, uh, again, uh, since I started working with Damien and he, and he gifted me the ability to um, partake in the training, I've seen amazing things happen in and around not only my life, but my business. So that's in six or eight weeks or thereabouts, massive changes in the way that I've been doing my business, the way that I've been showing up, and I just can't tell you how good this stuff is. Damien, can you tell the audience how they can um, jump on and have a look at the Solar Business Seeker training? Yeah, cool. So there's two ways we can do it. If you're a, um, if you're a person who would like to just do it at self-paced, um, you can just go to the website, uh, the thesolarbusiness.academy. You'll provide the links, Tony? Yes. The links yeah, will be cool. the links will be live in the chat, but also jump on a radiotony.com, uh, find my co-host and Damien's links will all be there as well. Yeah, so cool. The so, Soul of Academy. And the other ways, I know some of us uh, prefer to work in like a, a capsule of a, a smaller community. And so I'm mm -hmm. offering a um, like a mentorship, a group mentorship, which is the same URL. I think it's backslash mentorship. At the end of it yes. of the URL, so, so solar business dot academy backslash mentorship. And what I want to do yes. is, um, you know, maybe next month get twenty or thirty of our tribe, 20, 20 or thirty people, uh, solopreneurs together to go through the training together. So that yes. would be the same thing. The training, um, which is eighteen weeks, uh, join us in the in a community, and once a week yes. we'll get together and we'll we'll go through the training. We won't do the training okay. together. That's still deliver it online but we'll spend half yeah. an hour together as a community bouncing ideas yeah. around making sure you understood what's going on if you want accountability we can we can organize accountability if you want to you know maybe there's opportunities to partner with people to do different things yeah and, and keep, just, yes yeah facilitate all that so there's two different options um obviously i'll need uh 
to put a mentorship, a group mentorship together, we need um, enough numbers yes. to make the group a group worthwhile. That's it. So, so you want for 20 some... people, Damien? 20 or so, 30, 30 people to do that? Yeah. 20 to 30 people would be nice. It would be a nice community. Fantastic. Um, so at the next series of uh, – so this is a series of shows. So we'll be back next week with another five shows. Damien, what are we going to talk about next week? So next week, I think one of the most important things that I've found is connection, the connection that goes from us, us connecting to our craft um, and understanding how that works, um, us connecting to our clients properly and how that yes. works, and us connecting the craft to the business. So I think next week we should talk about how that works, um, how that yeah. doesn't work, because that's what usually yeah. puts us um, off, off track with with business you know that's when when there's yeah. separation between the craft and business that's when we lose faith and go back to working at Woolworths or something like that um yeah. so yeah so that's that's one of the most important pieces is to feel that connection so no matter what we're doing we feel in flow so it's that's what I'd like to yeah. talk about yeah. next week fantastic so everyone make sure you jump on to the soul of business.academy Damien and I will be back next week uh, same time same channel we'll be talking about connection uh, in terms of uh, the soul of business and I encourage you once again jump on and have a look at the training particularly if you're looking for support um, and fundamentals for anyone who is uh, a solopreneur, um, healers, artists, storytellers, authors, anyone that is kind of working solo but wanting to align their passion and purpose with the business and the acts and transactions of business. Damien, thank you so much for being live on Radio Tony, the soul of business today. I can't wait till our show next week. Audience, don't forget, jump on to the soul of business.academy. Have a look what Damien set up. It's fantastic. Um, and we will be back next week with more The Soul of Business and we'll be talking about connection. Thank you so much, Damien. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for having me. And that's your lot for this week. We'll see you all next week. Bye for now.